Hey there, Zom folk. Today, uh, we're going to go over uh, buying used equipment, specifically buying used printers, sign printers. Um, a lot of people, I see a lot of things come up on Marketplace. A lot of people are selling their, their printers. And I had an instance where um, I actually had a printer go down. I see a lot of questions, um, you know, about things to kind of look out for, you know, is this a good deal? Is this not a good deal? Um, so today's video, I'm going to give you some, uh, some quick pointers to, uh, kind of diagnose if the printer that you're looking at is good or bad, or if it needs work and, uh, if it's worth what you're willing to pay for it. So stick around and, uh, maybe you'll learn something. Uh, I hope it's informative. So, uh, I'm going to flip the camera around. We're going to get to it. Okay, everybody. So here today, I'm going to demonstrate some things to look for um, when buying used printers. Um, you know, this is a 54-inch uh, Muto printer. I know that the head is bad in it. Um, I'm just going to use this as a uh, kind of a guide, things to look for. That way, you know what to look for. Um, kind of point some things out for you, and uh, hopefully, it's informative to you. So. Uh, first thing I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest is you know when you walk into the area that the printer is for sale, look at the area around you. Um, that'll pretty much indicate um, the type of person that you're buying the printer from. If it's a clean environment, you know generally you, you kind of have less worry. But if it's a dirty, old, abandoned building, like I said, the uh, printer's covered in freaking dust and obviously it wasn't taken care of and it sat for three or four years, then there's obviously a lot of things that you got to look out for. So. Um, I'm going to use this printer as a display and kind of point you through some of the things that you should look out for, questions that you should ask, is it a good deal, is it a bad deal, and kind of assess how much work that the printer is going to need, if it needs any, um, in order to be, uh, uh, to, to be a workable piece of equipment in, uh, in your workflow. So I'm going to get the camera here and we're going to go through some things real quick. All right, so as I originally said, like I said, please excuse my mess. This is uh, the dirty area where I do all of my printing and my CNC uh, work. Obviously, I have not gotten rid of this printer yet, so it sits over here on the garage on the, quote, dirty side. Um, got some boat parts back here, but that's kind of irrelevant. So as we get into the first thing that you want to look for on, on printers is, number one, if the printer is being advertised as working 100%, um, the first thing that you're going to want to see is a printout or a nozzle print of, of the printer. Um, that's first and foremost, because that will indicate that the head is working correctly. All the ink lines, all the dampers, um, the maintenance station, everything is working the way that it is supposed to. Um, a, a printout or a nozzle check is very easy to check um without having software connected to uh to the printer so every printer has a built-in self-check um uh head assessment i guess is uh is uh the easiest way to put it um and you're gonna have to go through the user manual to determine how to make the printer do that but say on this muto it's very easy the only thing you have to do is hit this button do a nozzle check and uh, essentially you'll get bars or bands um, of each individual color of black, cyan, magenta, and yellow um, in a specific pattern such as this. So this is the nozzle check off of the, uh, the MUTO, the printer that we're just looking at. And this is the nozzle check that I'm talking about. So this is what you want to look for. This is the self-generated uh, nozzle check that comes off of the printer. This is pre-installed and you do not need software um, to diagnose or to see whether this is working. This is built directly into the firmware. Um, this is part of the general maintenance um, when you do uh, your, your printer cleaning. So um, as you can see on this specific MUTO, um, you can see all the bands are black, like I said, and um, this, so this would be your black, this would be your cyan, this would be your yellow, which is very, very difficult to see. Um, one, one thing that you can do to verify yellow is bring a UV light. Um, UV light will make the yellow actually show up so you can see better. Um, I can see a little bit. It's probably very, very difficult to see on, on the camera, but uh, I can see it's there. It's got some mixing in it. And then this is your magenta. Um, and this would indicate a fairly good working 
printer, print head. Um, I'm gonna swing this around a little bit because this is where I started having problems and this is an indication of you've got some other issues going on. So this is the same printer. Um, this is when I was specifically having issues with mine where nozzles would start to drop out. So you can see the difference over in here where not all the nozzles are firing. This would be your black, this would be your cyan, and so that's pretty uh, pretty good indication that something's going on there um, on one of the channels. So that MUTO had a dual chamber uh, damper. So um, I'll, I'll explain that when I get back to the printer, but um, this is a damper, that's 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 a damper. So um, each side of the head is controlled by dampers and the printer manufacturer sets that up. But you can tell like one side looks really good and then the other side, we're having some issues over there. Yellow has some mixing in it. Um, cyan, like I said, one side was good and the other side was kind of spotty. So that is what your nozzle check should look like if it's not good. This is a pretty good indication of a good operational printer. So if you determine that the nozzle check is good and the price is right, you pretty much have a good working uh, printer and there's really not a lot of uh, other things that you kind of need to look for that that is kind of like the proof in the pudding if you don't have a good nozzle check um, or a, a test print then um, you know you, you're going to have to do some work on it and whether that would be dampers maintenance station the head going out uh, some chem contamination in the uh, in the ink system you know there's just so many variables without specifically knowing but again this video is kind of showing you what to look for when you're buying used equipment um, and uh, yeah so having a nozzle check is great if you have a good nozzle check like I said thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like and subscribe like I said come back and check out some of my other videos but if you're buying a printer that's been sitting around a while and they advertise it as parts or it needs work, continue watching. Um, so the, the first thing to, to diagnose, um, so if, if say your printer is not, or the printer that you're uh, interested in purchasing is not printing correctly, um, you will have to diagnose and I'm sure that the seller could probably give you a little bit more information than what you can kind of diagnose. And then um, it has to be a bargaining chip or within reason, uh, for you to take that risk in order to buy the printer. Um, some of the other things, so if the printer is not working, a couple things to look for to see how much more work that you're gonna have to do. Um, one thing, so this is the print head. Um, one thing that you're gonna wanna look at is inside of the printer. Deper determining how clean that printer is um, will determine the life that it's had and the care that it has been taking, uh, maintenance history, I should say. Um, this specific maintenance station is new. Um, it was replaced um, because I assumed that there was an error with the maintenance station, but uh, that was not the case. So the thing that you want to do on the maintenance station is actually look around. See how clean or how dirty it is. Um, this is your wiper. These are disposable. Like I said, they need to be changed about every, I don't know, uh, six months, we'll just say. Six months to a year, depending on how much printing that you actually do. Um, the printer on the inside is pretty dirty. Um, because of the maintenance station was failing, um, it just collected a lot of crap and there was uh, a lot of stuff that I just really couldn't clean up. So do a visual inspection of the maintenance station. Make sure that it's clean. Um, this is the uh, top. It should move freely. Um, it should not stick or should not bind. Like I said, this is the part that actually um, meets the bottom of the print head um, during the clean cycle. Because the worst thing that you can do is let an eco-solvent printer sit with a open head because uh, these inks will dry and when they dry, um, it's very, very difficult to clean. Generally, you're replacing things. So that's number one so the second thing we're going to pull the head over here um, most printers have a access area where you can do visual inspections on the head um, this specific muto um, does so this is a little door that closes um, and it is for uh, maintenancing the print head this is specifically where you clean the print head. Um, so the, some of the other things that you're gonna wanna look for, like I said, this is the uh, head position sensor. So this is up, down, up, down. Um, generally there's a specific um, 
order that the the printer so this specific printer the the print head has to be down in order for the printer to shut off but um after a visual inspection so you can see down there that's kind of that gold area right in there that's in the reflection that is the actual bottom of the print head you want to do a visual inspection whether you bring a mirror um, and look for scratches um, if this printer was functional then you would uh, actually see ink droplets on the bottom um, you would actually see ink droplets down down in there sorry for sticking my finger in there so trying to refocus um, so yeah that is that is your print head and you'll want to do a visual inspection on that um, in this instance this print head is blown um, nothing you can do it doesn't matter like I said I can actually touch it that you're never supposed to do um, during a functional uh, print head but uh, yeah for this instance it doesn't matter the head is blown um, sometimes you'll also see ink coming out of the sides here which in my instance this print head is blown which means that that metal part has actually separated from the from the other piece so that's where I was getting a lot of my issues from. So this, this print head is actually blown. Um, so in the instance that the print head is blown and you're trying to figure out, all right, so how much more work that I actually have to do? So another thing to look for is you can see that these ink lines, they don't have any ink in it. Well, there is some ink in it. Um, sometimes you need a replacement. It's not that big of a deal, but you can see as I flick these, the ink is still fluid in there. So that's a good indication that the system is still sealed um, from the back where the cartridges go. So your cartridges um, would go back in here, one, two, three, four, cyan, yellow, uh, magenta, and black. And then it has ink lines that run all the way up and they kind of loop back over. And um, so the ink lines deliver ink to the head. So you want to make sure that these uh, lines still are um, usable. Um, they're not contaminated. I mean, you can obviously replace them if you like, but you can see you can see where that ink is still fluid in there. So that means that the system is still sealed, um, which is uh, a, a good thing. Um, so you don't have to worry about any kind of clogging or anything like that. That's a, that's a really good indication of... Uh, it's just pretty much straightforward replacing the head. Um, so some of the other things that you're going to want to look at, put this guy back here, is the operational of the media handling system. So, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of times, you know, when people put these printers up, um, they they sit in a either a non climate controlled environment. In this case, it is climate controlled. It stays about seventy to seventy five degrees over here on this side. But I've noticed um, a lot of these pinch rollers here. These are just a very soft rubber, and it basically it holds the media down um, when the printer is loaded. And behind there, that is your grit roller. And that actually advances the media as the printer is actually printing. So you want to do um, a quick inspection of all these little rollers here. These suckers get a little expensive and they're kind of a pain in the butt to replace if you need to. Um, they shouldn't be slimy. They shouldn't be gummy. Um, they should be a nice firm, um, you know, uh, rubber kind of feel to them. Like I said, you shouldn't have anything come off on your fingers. That should be uh, a really good uh, indication that all of these rollers are in good shape. Um, another thing that, that I found out is uh, when, so when a printer sits for a long period of time, like I said, it's best to keep the printer um, in a, uh, or at least keep the material handing part in the upright position. You should not keep those caps locked down on the uh, pinch roller because it will create a problem and it will create flat spots on those, on those rollers. So another good thing is, like I said, leave it up. If it's in the up position, you're probably pretty good. Um, another thing that you're going to want to look for is damage on the encoder strip. So the encoder strip, basically, um, there's lines and marks, and there is a reader on the back side of the head, which tells the printer where the print head is. Um, that can give some really wonky results um, if the encoder strip is not clean or if you're having issues with the reader. Um, and again, like I said, your nozzle check will determine whether uh, that is all good and bad. But just on a quick visual inspection, like I said, you want to go through and make sure it's not nicked or inked up. Um, you want it nice and clean. There are marks on the back of this. It's really, really difficult to see. Um, but the, uh, the reader picks up those, uh, 
um, those marks on the back of your encoder strip. And again, uh, you need to take some care when you when you uh, maintenance these. But uh, you know, for the most part, you generally never have an issue unless there's a huge head crash. So uh, let's see here. Let's move on to some of the material handling systems. So uh, this printer actually has a take up reel. Whether it works or whether it doesn't, that's a plus. Um, if it comes with your printer, um, you know, they're pretty um, easy to operate. They operate off of uh, 115. Just plug it in the wall. Like I said, it has a little switch on it. Um, the switch is forward or reverse. And inside of these are clogs and springs. You can actually adjust the tension um, on, on the material handling system depending on the weight of the media that you're printing on. Uh, next thing, we'll go over to the waste tank ink. Um, you know, do a visual inspection on that. So behind this uh, little corrugated hose here, you can see, you can see that that's actually a clear hose. And so what I'm looking for is fluid inside of there or um, not fluid because if it's clogged and I've seen these get clogged before, um, that's why the inside of these can become a mess. Um, specifically, like I said, this little channel right here, it's kind of difficult to see this little channel. Yeah, there we go. So this little channel here, as your printer's printing or cleaning, it actually flushes off all the extra ink and it goes down this little gutter. So in that little gutter, there are some hoses that go back. Let's see if I can get this here. So over there on the left side, it's really difficult for me to pinpoint there, but there are some hoses back behind there that push the ink or drain, lets the ink drain down into here. So make sure all of that is not clogged. That's probably a good thing. There is some, uh, some ink in there. Not a bad thing. <laughs> Next thing that you want to do is a visual inspection of the rear. This is your rear media handling system. This is where your media goes in to get loaded. Um, make sure that rolls, nothing's broken, everything looks good. Um, you know, these pieces aren't hard to get a hold of, but um, they're just kind of a, they're expensive if you have to buy them new. So that's one other indication of, uh, you know, whether the stuff was taken care of or just, you know, one more thing that you have to add, fix, or replace. Um, this is your ink cartridge system. Like I said, this specific printer has black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And this is where your ink cartridges would go. Obviously, there's, there's a lock on there because I don't have any inks, but uh, you know, get you a spare cartridge, make sure that you put it in there, make sure that it comes out. It's pretty easy to try one of those. So this is a typical uh, Muto MS31 cartridge, and each cartridge, um, they are directional. So that arrow always goes up to the top and forward. So you can see there is a notch right there on the tip of the, uh, cartridge and there's a little knockout right there up top where the cartridge is going to go pretty simple so you take black and make sure that the cartridge will get inserted and of course there is some resistance in there and you just want to remove the cartridge um, and again like I said with the printer powered up and you inserting these in cartridges in there um, you know, make sure that all that stuff gets registered, uh, whether they were using third party inks um, or just using OEM inks. Like I said, just, you know, do some due diligence. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and try to fire the printer up. Like I said, and we'll kind of give you some error messages here and some other things to kind of go through real quick. Okay, so now we have the printer. Uh, we have power to the printer. And. Um, Let's see here. So the next step would be, does the printer turn on? Something that you want to check. Zoom in here. Like I said, you see that the screen is good. All the power, the indicator lights. Let's see if the arrow light works, which I'm sure it's going to light up here momentarily. Listen to the fans. Make sure everything comes on. Um, it tells you that the 
Um, head, head, head height is set to low, which is good. Cleaning mode, you know, these are just some of the settings that you're going to have to figure out through the user manual on each specific printer. Um, so let's put the lever down. That system works. So again, this printer um, has a bad head on it, so that's pretty uh, indicative of as far as this printer is going to go. So if I was buying this printer and I sold it, or if I was buying this printer and the seller told me that it needed a print head, I would be fully confident in taking the seller's word for it. But everyone has to do their own due diligence. Sometimes you come across these deals that are just too good to be true. Um, it doesn't matter if the printer has low usage. If it's not printing or if it's been setting on an Eco Sullivan printer, you're going to have to do some work. And if the price isn't right and you're not comfortable working on these printers, uh, more than likely you're going to have to put a print head in. Some people aren't up to that daunting task. Some people will take it with great stride. So just beware, just because a printer sits in as good condition and low usage, if they can't guarantee you a nozzle check or a uh, some sort of good printout, then you can't really take their word for it. I've seen people go through hundreds of dollars of ink, hundreds of dollars of cleaning solution, trying to get printers to print. End result is the head is bad because the printer set for so long and the ink just uh, dried up on on the uh, on the head, which basically renders the head useless. So I hope that helps you guys out. Like I said, it's a little video, little heads up, things to look for, buying a new. Uh, or buying a new used, new to you, uh, Eco Sullivan printer. So I hope you all take care. Don't forget, like, subscribe, leave some comments down below. Let me know what your experiences have been. And uh, until next time, we'll see you, Seinfeld. Thank you for watching. Take care.